Okay, so this video is called the Cold War. So after World War II, um, since the economy was booming, you know, factories were making um, items for the war. Many of these kind of many of these factories had to close and lay off people because they weren't making um, these things for war anymore. So they, you know, they didn't have to make guns and tanks all the time. So those jobs weren't there. So a lot of people um, got laid off. Women and minorities were laid off, and close to 10 million veterans were looking for jobs. And uh, companies were choosing veterans over women and minorities because, you know, they wanted to kind of honor them, and they, and they wanted those, those veterans to have those jobs. And so many women and minorities were laid off. Um, the post-war economy did boom. Despite these layoffs, the post-war economy was doing very well because people wanted to start families. They wanted to buy homes. They wanted to buy things that they couldn't buy during the war, so they were saving up money for it. So the post-war economy was booming very well. Um, the GI Bill helped veterans get their lives started by paying for school, giving them some money to live on, um, getting them back on their feet. And immediately after the war, uh, labor unions went back on strike. So people were, they, they asked for more money, better working conditions. So labor unions were able to get better wages and better working conditions for their people. Previously, they had promised not to go on strike during the war to make sure nothing was unsettled. Um, African Americans were hoping for equality, uh, but they continued to be discriminated against, obviously, and you know, that's not really going to be resolved for quite some time to go. Um, but Truman did begin to address um, the racial issues. You know, he did begin to address that and kind of planted the seeds from the civil rights movements there. Um, he did win re-election in 1948. This was kind of an upset victory. Nobody really expected him to win, but he did win after World War II. So Harry Truman is still our president in 1948. So the Cold War begins. So Harry Truman was reelected as a Democratic president with a Republican Congress. So he wasn't able to get much of his stuff done. Um, and he was having to deal with huge issues overseas. So not only was he not able to pass laws that he wanted to pass in Congress because he had a Republican Congress and he was a Democratic president, but he had a lot of issues overseas. Uh, the Soviets now occupied Eastern European territories that Hitler had once controlled. And Stalin's member, member Stalin said he promised to make those democracies but he was actually installing a pro-Soviet communistic government. Um, and so that was very much against what the United States and the Soviet Union had agreed to do initially. This created a lot of attention between the democracies in the world like the United States and the communists in the East like the Soviet Union, and they kind of went at each other. You know, pro-democracy, pro-communism battle with each other. Um, and each country accused the other of trying to dominate world issues, trying to solve everything. Um, and this led to the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union for decades. The Cold War goes on for, for a couple of decades, and they threatened deadly force even though they never really met on the battlefield. They threatened to drop bombs and attack each other, and nothing ever happened. Really, it was just a lot of threat and fear that kind of raved through both countries. So the Iron Curtain and the Berlin Airlift. Well, Churchill, who was Winston, I mean Winston Churchill, who was Britain's prime minister, called the divide between Eastern and the Western unions uh, the Iron Curtain. All right, so Eastern and Western Europe was kind of split in half. You had pro-democracy and, and pro-communists, and the wall in the middle that he considered to be an Iron Curtain. You were not going to break down that Iron Curtain. Um, and so in 1945, the Allies from World War II agreed to divide Germany into four zones controlled by United States, France, Great Britain, and the Soviet Union. So each part of the, each country got a zone in Germany. The Western powers wanted to merge all their zones. The pro-democratic one wanted to merge all their zones as West Germany. So the United States, France, and Great Britain wanted to merge their zones into West Germany and be kind of a pro-democratic area. But Stalin took action because he thought the United Germany would kind of threaten the Soviet Union's power. He didn't want Germany to unite again. He wanted to keep his side. So Berlin, which is the German, Germany's capital, um, was in the Soviet eastern zone. All right, so the Berlin's capital was in the eastern zone under the Soviet control, though the city was divided in east and west. So the, so the Union was, or Berlin was divided between east and west. So west, you know, obviously the United States, east being the Soviet Union. And so Stalin decided to block access to Berlin from Western power. So Western people could not get into Berlin at all. So there were people in there, depending on the Western allies, the United States, France, and Britain, to have supplies and stuff. And, and the Soviet Union was blocking them out. So Truman and Britain had to airlift supplies, this is the Berlin airlift, to Berlin for an entire year until Stalin gave up and Berlin became communist in the East and democratic in the West. So the United States and Britain were having to airlift, airlift goods into Berlin because Stalin was blocking the Western powers from getting into their side of Berlin. So obviously we're having a lot of tension start to pop up. So containment. 
Truman um, fought communism with this idea of containment. He wanted to prevent communism from spreading um, with or without military help, either use military force or not, but he was not going to let communism spread. He didn't want to do it. So he passed the Truman Doctrine, which promised to help people fighting for pro-democracy. All right, so anybody helping to fight, keep democracy and fight for democracy, the Truman Doctrine promised to aid them or help them. All right, the Marshall Plan, which we talked about was passed at the end of World War II, was done in order to not only revive economies, but also to contain communism. So by supplying money to particular countries in uh, Europe, specifically the Western and Southern European economies, um, they were able to revive them. They kind of came dependent on that pro-democracy money. So that was kind of saying, hey, make sure your democracy, because remember, who were the ones that gave you the money? So it was a nice, clever ploy, but the Marshall Plan was designed to do that. There was a lot of fear uh, in the United States and all over the world. So a lot of people that feared communism, a lot of countries that got together, got together to form NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So this is the United States, Canada, and then 10 Western European countries who got together and became a pro-democratic alliance because they feared the spread of communism. The Soviet Union and Eastern European countries created an alliance called the Warsaw Pact, all right, the Warsaw Pact, which was made up of pro-communistic countries who did not want democracy. So you had two alliances forming, just setting the stage for a continual Cold War between the United States in the Soviet Union. All right, so what does communism look like in the home front for the United States? What is it like here? Well, obviously, many Americans feared communism, especially it's spreading in the United States. Um, and they began to accuse people of being a communist because you didn't want communists in the United States back then. And so they were afraid that communists were getting in. They were spies for the Soviet Union. And that created a lot of turmoil and unrest. There were two huge uh, spy trials back then. There were a lot of them, but here are a couple. Alger Hiss, he worked for the State Department was accused of passing military info to the Soviet Union. He was put in jail, so he was accused of that, of being a communist. Ethel and Julius Rosenberg were members of the American Communist Party, all right? and they were accused of passing atomic bomb secrets to the Soviet Union, and they were executed. So you had this sense of, this sense of fear in communist, of communists in America, and people were accusing these people, and it went even further. In 1947, Truman ordered, ordered ordered loyalty checks on about 4 million uh, government workers and forced many of those people to resign if they didn't seem to be loyal to the United States. It didn't even mean they were necessarily communists. They might not have just been as loyal to the United States as they wanted, but they were scared that some of them might be communists. Also, a lot of blacklists were created of people who might be associated with communists, and this ruined a lot of people's careers. Movie people, athletes, famous people, whoever it was, were put on these blacklists and you know you weren't supposed to associate with them or use them in anything. And these people that made blacklists, their lives are absolutely ruined. And you know, the sphere of communism spreads all the way into the 1950s almost, even in the 1950s, which we're going to study eventually. So this Cold War, we're just setting the stage for what's going to play out with the democracy and communism war as we play these uh, factors out between the Soviet and the United States and how it spreads into other parts of the world as well.